Okay, before we talk about bean scopes in spring, let us try to understand what is a singleton descent pattern in general, thereby we'll have some solid foundation to understand scope of beans in spring. So what is a singleton design pattern? Singleton design pattern ensures that you would be able to create only one instance of a class and you would use the same instance across your application. So no matter how many times you would be needing that object, you would use the same object again and again everywhere in your application. We're going to talk about some of the scenarios where this might be useful, but let us try to understand how we can bring up a very simple example of singleton design pattern. So what you're seeing right here is a simplest example that I can think of that demonstrates the singleton design pattern. So now my goal is actually to restrict the creation of an instance of this class to only one. Nobody can create more than one instance of this class. So let's see how we can accomplish that. So the first thing that I did is I made the constructor private. What this means is when the constructor is either public or default, we can actually create an instance of this class from elsewhere outside this class. But if I make it a private constructor, then I can only create instances of this class from within the same class itself, not anywhere else. And that's what I'm trying to do in here. I'm trying to create an instance and assign it to this variable. But before I do that, I'm also checking to see if the instance is null. If it is not, only then I'm trying to assign that instance in here. And then finally I'm just returning this variable when this method is called and that's all there is to it. Now we sort of accomplished a singleton design pattern because the first time that I request for an object, this is going to be null and the condition would be satisfied. And so there's going to be a new instance assigned and I'm returning that instance. The second time I request for instance, the condition would no longer be valid because we already had an instance created prior to asking for it. So likewise for all the subsequent requests to get the instance, we would keep getting the same instance, but there won't be any new creation of the instance. So let's go to our example main method and try to demonstrate the same. I'm just simply going to put a sysout statement and then I would say single turn example dot get instance and then if I wish I can call the business logic method. But here I just simply want to print the hash code of that object and I'm going to do this several times. So no matter how many times I'm going to request for instance, only for the first time the instance would be created and for rest of the instructions this condition will not be satisfied and so I keep getting the same instance. It's as simple as that. Let's run the program and sure enough the hash code is displayed all same. That means we're trying to get the same instance again and again. But unfortunately we didn't quite accomplish our goal of singleton design pattern because we still left a loophole where there is a possibility to create multiple instances of this class. That possibility is there when you have a multi-threaded environment where multiple threads are trying to access this piece of logic at the same time, then there could be a possibility that multiple threads will satisfy this condition and then enter this section of code and create multiple instances. Let me just try to demonstrate the same. Let me get it off this from here. And let me create a new thread. And I'm going to use a lambda expression. And just in case if you're not aware of lambda expressions, this is a feature introduced in Java version 8. And my course on Java programming explains this beautifully. And what I'm going to do is the exact thing that I'm trying to do in here. I just want to get the hash code of that instance and print it 
I'm going to say thread dot start. And I'm going to do it multiple times. Let's run the program. Okay, this time, coincidentally, all the threads went in sequence. But if you keep running, so there we have it. We have a hash code that is different from others. That means we now have two instances of this class. So this object is not a singleton object. And this would be more evident if I try to keep a timer in here or I would just simply use thread.sleep and I would wait for a thousand seconds. Of course, we need to wrap the code with try catch block. And now let's run the program. And you would notice that all the objects are different. That means we have, if you have 10 different threads, you're going to have 10 different instances of that class. Definitely not a good thing if you're planning to accomplish the singleton design pattern. So what would be the solution? Well, the solution is quite simple. All we have to do is to wrap this piece of code within a synchronized block. And I'm going to do just that. And I'm going to let this class objects acquire the lock. Now this is all core Java. I'm assuming that you already know all this stuff. If not, again, you can check my course on the same. It's a beautiful course, rated very good. And I'm going to have this check here as well. Oops. Why is it not getting copied? Okay, let's do control C and control V, perfect. So now what am I trying to do here? Let's say that there are a couple of threads which are trying to get inside this section of code. And let's say they both have this condition met, they enter here, and one of the thread would be able to acquire the lock and enter this section of code and then create an instance. When second thread tries to enter the synchronized section, this condition will not be met anymore. And hence, it would grab the existing instance. It's as simple as that. Now let's try to run the program. And sure enough, this time, we have the same object everywhere. So now the real question, why would you ever want to use a singleton design pattern? Well, the answer is quite simple. Why would you want to create so many instances when it doesn't make sense? Just to let you know, creating an instance demands a bit of a performance. And if you go ahead and create instance every once in a while, that's going to cost some performance. Moreover, creating an instance will also take a bit of memory and there is a possibility to come across with some unforeseen exceptions like out of memory exception, etc. So hence, we always should try to create the instance creation to minimal. And moreover, this class in here does not have any properties. That means the instances that we create from this class will not hold any state. If you're aware of EJBs, this is equivalent to a stateless bean. The object doesn't hold any state. All it has is set of methods and they perform a certain task. One good example of this is when you're trying to create a database connection. You don't want to create a database connection every time you interact with the database. That's going to cost a lot of performance. Rather, you would just create only once. In other words, you would implement a singleton design pattern to create the database connection object and you would use the same object everywhere in your application and save the performance. Likewise, if you're aware of logging mechanism, you would just create one instance of a logger and then you would use it across your application to print the logging messages on the standard output. But singleton pattern may not be ideal choice if your object is going to hold some state. We're going to talk about it in coming video. I'll see you soon.